WordPress gives us two different ways to publish new content. We've got WordPress posts and we've got WordPress pages. And this is one of the main causes of confusion for beginners. You should know the difference between posts and pages, but just in case, I want to do a quick recap of WordPress pages in this lecture, and then we're going to go on in this section to look at pages in a little bit more detail. Firstly, WordPress pages don't appear on time structured views on a WordPress site. So things like category pages, tag pages, author views, these are only there for WordPress posts. And in fact, pages don't have the option of being put into a category or having tags added to them. WordPress pages also do not appear on a site's RSS feed. So if you have an RSS feed on your site, then it's only going to show the posts. WordPress pages are typically used for content that is non-chronological or completely separate from any other piece of content on the website. So an about us page or a contact page or a legal page. These are the types of content that you wouldn't want to be able to assign a category to, would you? You wouldn't want to assign a category to a contact page or a privacy policy. So that is often a good test. Should I be using a page or should I be using posts? One exception to the way I use pages and posts is with business sites because business sites quite often use pages for the main pieces of content. But on a business site, as you'll see later in this course, when we look at the structure of a typical business site, those individual pieces of content are non-chronological. They are separate and there is no reason to use categories for those pieces of content. So they still follow the same rules. Something that I will do on nearly all of the websites that I create, unless it's a blog, is to use a WordPress page for my homepage. You create a page, you add the content that you want to appear on your homepage, and then you set that as a static homepage in the WordPress settings. As we've seen, WordPress pages cannot be categorized and you cannot add tags to them. However, they can be organized into a hierarchy. So you can have parent pages and child pages, and this gives pages their organizational structure. Pages can also use different page templates. And this is something that we're going to have a look at a little bit later in the course. So this section of the course, I'm going to focus on WordPress pages and we're going to look at them in a little bit more detail. As you know, WordPress pages can be set up in a hierarchy with parent pages and child pages. And that's what I want to look at in this video. The first thing we should address, though, is why you would want to set up parent child relationships with pages. The answer to that is really one of organization. If you look at the URLs of child pages, they contain the parent page URL and just have the name of the child page appended to it. This will become clear as we have a look at a couple of examples. So let's take an example right now. Let's suppose we have a photography website and we want to have a parent page called photography. And I'm just going to just publish that. And if we go back to the all pages, you can see there's my photography parent page here. I'm going to add a child page and I'm going to call this Landscapes. Now, landscapes is a type of photography. I want that to be a child page of photography. So let's publish that one. And we'll add another one. We'll call this Nature. And this again is a child page of photography. I've actually spelt photography wrong, as you can see down here, but it doesn't matter. You can see that that landscape's already indented underneath the, the parent page. Let's publish that one. I'm going to just go back to my old pages and just change this just because I did make that error. I'm going to change the slug as well. Click on update. If I go back to all pages, we can see photography, parent page, child page, child page. Let's add one more and we'll call this portraits. And again, it's a child of photography. Now, let's have a look at the URLs. Let's go to all pages and I'm going to click on view, 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 and view. And I'm going to drag my bar down here so you can see the URLs. Okay, the parent page. 
forget this little bit, the front localhost. This is a, a website on my own computer. This would just be the domain URL with photography as the parent page. The first child page, same URL with landscapes attached, same URL with nature attached, and same URL with portraits attached. So these pages are organized by the URLs. The fact that you've got the parent page keyword in there may give you an SEO boost, but it's also useful for your site visitors. When they come into your website and they see they're on the photography section and then they click on the nature section, they can see, oh, they're in the photography nature section or they're in the photography portrait section. So it helps them as well. This organization of your pages is the main reason for creating parent-child relationships. The visitors like it, search engines like it, and it will make it a little bit easier to manage your pages if you have a lot of pages on your WordPress website. Let's think of another example where we would use parent-child pages. So let me just type in a site and this site has an About Us page. It's a business site, so the company has a number of team members. So what we could do then is we could have a parent page about us, and then that parent page will link to different team members. And so on. Again, organizing your pages using parent-child relationships makes it easier for visitors to know what's happening, to make the search engines know what's happening, and also makes it easier for you to manipulate and control and manage your website as the number of pages grows. Let's go back to this demo site, and what we'll do is have a look at how we could create a parent-child relationship for this let's say this team of people. We've got an About Us page there, so let me create another one. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a menu as it might appear on a business site. So let's say we've got Jack. He is one of the team members. So we're going to have the About Us as the parent. We'll have Julie. Again, About Us is the parent. And we'll just do one more Felicity parent page about us. Okay, so if we go back and look at all the pages, we can see that the about us is the parent and we've got indented underneath here. So the about us would probably be a generic page about the company and then mention the people who work there. Those page, those links to the people who work at the company would then point to these other pages on the website and we might want to include this as a menu on the site. So let's go to menus and we're going to create a menu for this. I'm going to click on create new menu. I'm going to call it team. Click create. Okay, the team menu has been built. I now want to go to my pages and I want to include, in fact, include all of those. I'm going to add them to the menu. Now, straight out of the box, you can see that these are all level with each other. If we save the menu and we go to the menu locations and we select the primary menu as team, go across to the website, you can see the menu is just a normal menu. What we actually want is to have a drop down menu. To do that, you probably already know, you just drag the sub pages underneath and indent them a little bit. And then when we save that and we go back to the website, and we just refresh. We've got the about us and then we've got the various team members. I'm going to be stating the obvious here. Probably we've created a hierarchical menu to show how you would set it up for parent child WordPress pages, but hierarchical menus can be used for any type of menu. If you've got posts, or custom links or categories or format links in your menus, you can make those hierarchical as well. This isn't just about parent child pages. The reason I've shown you it here is because we're dealing with parent child hierarchical pages. Therefore, I thought it would be a good idea to show you a hierarchical menu built from those pages. That's it. They are available to all menus that you create, no matter what items are in that menu. When you're working with pages, one of the things you're more likely to want to do 
is to make the page full width. So here we have an About Us page and we would want to remove this right hand sidebar. If I go to the child pages, they all have the same sidebar. So it would be worth getting rid of those. Now there are a couple of ways that you can do this. One of them is by using the theme if the theme has the ability to customize the page layout. So this particular theme is Astra and it does. So if I log in, let's say to the About Us page, I'm going to go in and click on the Edit Page link and scroll down. There is an Astra settings down here where I can say no sidebar. And then if I update that page and let's go and open it and have a look, you can see now that that is a full width piece of content. And I could do the same for the Felicity, Jack and Julie pages to remove those sidebars as well. But some themes don't have that option. Let's go and have a quick look. I'm going to go into themes and I'm going to select the 2016 theme. And then if we go back to the website and have a look, we can see we've got the sidebar down here. Let's click on the About Us and we've got the sidebar down here. So let's go in and edit the page and see what the 2016 theme allows us to do. We've got parent attributes. We don't want to change the parent child order. We've got the block editor and set feature, but there's nowhere to remove the right sidebar. Let's just enable all of these options in the screen options. You won't have these screen options if you're using the Gutenberg editor. I'm using the classic editor by installing the classic editor plugin in this case. But just to have a look, again, there is nowhere in here to remove the right sidebar. So in cases like that, you're going to need to create a custom page template. In the next few lectures, we're going to look at page templates. We're going to go on to look at the template hierarchy and conditional statements you can use. And then we'll look at how we can create a custom template. And as an example, we'll create a custom template that will remove the sidebar from the pages. When somebody comes to your website to view a web page, WordPress will take the content out of the database and it will insert that content into a template to format the layout of that page or post. So WordPress is template driven and templates are simply PHP files that explain to WordPress how we want to display the page content. Page templates can apply to a specific page or a group of pages. Since WordPress 4.7, page templates can be used for all post types. So we can create page templates that will apply to pages, posts, attachments and other post types. We're going to look specifically at WordPress pages, but the same principle applies if you want to create a custom template for a post. Page templates then will change the layout, look or feel of a page and they can target one or more pages on the site. You can create page templates that will only affect a single page. For example, you might only want a page template that works on the About Us page. You can do that. That's entirely possible. Or you can create page templates and give them a name like Full Width No Sidebar. And then that page template will be available to your WordPress admin users when they're creating a page so that they can quickly select that format, that template that you created. So how do you go about creating a page template? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. If you're a PHP programmer, you can start from scratch and create it from scratch. But an easier way is to take an existing template and modify it. And we can easily modify templates using something called conditional statements, which we'll look at in a later video. This is the easiest way to start. But since we're editing PHP files, we should work with a child theme. Fortunately, we've already done that so that whatever you do to your theme, the changes you make won't be overwritten when the parent theme is updated. So we're going to take an existing template and we're going to modify it to create a custom template. But that brings up a question. Which template do we start off with? This is the Astra templates that come with the Astra theme. And if we look down, we can see a number of different templates. We've got 404, archive, comments, footer, header, index, page, search, sidebar and single. Which one of those do we start with? Well, this is where the template hierarchy comes in and we're going to look at that in the next video.
what you can see in front of you is the template hierarchy used by WordPress. This website is wphierarchy.com. And if you go across there, you'll be able to have a look at this diagram. This diagram might look a little confusing, but it's not really that confusing. They're basically paths from the left hand side to the right hand side of the screen. Let's take a simple example first. Let's say somebody comes in to your website and the page doesn't exist. WordPress is going to throw up a 404 error. So WordPress wants to display a 404 error. What template is WordPress going to use to format the content of the 404 error page? Well, it will start over here. It will find the 404 error page here and it will then follow the line along. And it's the first template that it comes to is 404 PHP, which if I bring in my Astra themes, you can see 404 PHP. That is the template then that Astra will use to display the 404 error message. If that page didn't exist, if that template wasn't there, then the, it, the WordPress would continue following along this line, following it up there and across. And the only other template that it can use is the index PHP. So for a 404, it will use the 404.php if it's there. If it's not, it will then display the contents of the 404 error page using the index PHP template. Since we're interested in creating a custom page template, let's assume that the content that somebody's trying to view is a page. So we can come down here and see which is the most appropriate. We've got archive page, singular page, site front page, and some other items down there. The one we want is a singular page. So if we follow, we've got two paths. We can go across to single post or static page. Well, we're talking about WordPress pages. We're talking about static pages. So we follow this route down here and we come to page template. So WordPress is looking for a page template and it's got two options. A custom template is the first option. Is there a custom template for this page? And that's what WordPress is going to look for. If it finds that custom template, then that is the one it's going to use. If it doesn't find a custom template, follow this line to where it says page dash slug PHP. So WordPress will then look for a template that is called page dash and then the name of the page. To give you an example, here I am over on my demo site. This is a page, it's called About Us. So if WordPress is looking to see, is there a, a template created for this About Us page? What it will do is it will come along here and it will say, right, page dash about us dot PHP. If it finds that, then it knows it's found the right template for that particular file to be displayed. If it doesn't find a template called page dash about us dot PHP, then it will continue along the line here to page ID and it will look to see if there is a template called page dash and then a number. The number, if we go back to the all pages, is the post ID. And if you move your mouse over down in the bottom left hand corner of this screen, now you'll see a URL that basically gives you the admin post.php URL and then it says question mark post equals and then has a number. This one is number 16. Felicity is number 678. Jack is 674 and so on. So the ID for about us is 16. So what WordPress will look for is, is there a template page dash 16.php? If there is, then it will use that template to display the contents of the about us page. If that doesn't exist, WordPress will then go to page.php, which is a standard template here over in the Astra. So that is the one that would then be used to display the page. But if it didn't exist, WordPress would look for one called singular PHP. In the Astra, there isn't a singular, there is a single, there isn't a singular. So WordPress would then ultimately go to index. However, as it is with Astra, we do have the page PHP and so that is the one that would be used in this case. If we wanted to create a custom template for the About Us page, what we could do is we could take this page PHP, because we know that's the one that WordPress would use otherwise, so we want to customize that one, take that page PHP and copy it and paste it into our child theme. Now, if I was to edit page PHP as it is, then all of the pages on the website would then be displayed showing page PHP or displayed using the page PHP template. If I wanted to create a template that only worked for the About Us page, then I would 
either put about us, that then would only apply to the about us page or to use the post number. Page 16 PHP will only be used for the about us page. All of these other pages would use the standard page.php, which doesn't exist in the child, but don't forget the child is only overwriting the parent. If, it doesn't, if it's not included in the child, then WordPress will go to the parent theme and look for the, the template there. There is another way that we could create a template. We can call it page php and there is a way we could create that template but only have the customization show on the about us page and that is by directly editing this template and using something called conditional statements so for example we've got the get header here which is going to display the header section of the web page but if we wanted to remove that on the about us page we could use a conditional statement and say look if this is the header then don't get header just leave the header as it is However, if it's not the About Us page, then get the header. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at conditional statements, what they are and how you can use them. In this lecture, I'd like to talk a little bit about conditional statements because we can use conditional statements to make quick edits, quick changes to existing templates. So for example, if we decided that we wanted to have an About Us page that didn't have the sidebar, yet all of the other pages on the site have the sidebar, we can actually edit the page template that controls all those pages and just make an edit that will affect just the About Us page. This is by using conditional statements. Let's look at an example of what I mean. For all of the pages on your website, unless you've created custom pages, then they will be using a template called PagePHP. We saw that in the template hierarchy. PagePHP will contain a number of commands, a number of blocks of code, and every page that loads on your website is going to run all of these blocks of code because they're in the template. But we can use a conditional statement and say, look, if this is the About Us page, then don't run this block of code. Let's take an example here. Let's say this is sidebar, let's say show sidebar code. Then what we could say is that all of the pages on the site use this page PHP. It all runs through here, runs through all the blocks of code. But what we can do is put a conditional statement in here and say, if this is about us page, then don't run this block of code. And so what we're doing is a quick edit to remove the sidebar from a single page only. So what are these conditional statements then? Let's go to Google and type in WordPress conditional. In fact, they're called tags, I think, in the WordPress in the WordPress codex, conditional tags. Here we go, WordPress codex. Let's click on that and this page will teach you everything you need to know about all of the different conditional tags. So we've got is home, is front page. If we scroll down, we'll see is sticky. We'll see is post type archive, is comment pop up. Down here a little bit further is page. OK, that's the one that we want because we are asking WordPress to look, is this a page that's loading? And what we can do is we can include the page ID or the page title or the page slug to help identify the page that we're targeting. If we think back to the earlier example we used about an about us page, we had a page ID, I think, of 16. So we could say is page 16. So if this is page 16, then do this. Or if this is not page 16, then do that. We could say is page and then use the title which is about us or is page and then use the slug about dash us. So let's go back to this notepad. We can say if is page and then we'll put in the page ID which I seem to remember was 16 then run this code. However, we don't want that. We want to say if this is page 16 then don't run this code. So what we can use is a not operator. And we can say if, let me put this in brackets to make it clear, if, whoops, if is, sorry, if not is page 16, it's like saying if this is not page 16, then show sidebar. However, if it is 16, then it's going to skip that little bit of code. This is a simple conditional tag that is basically saying only run this code on these pages, don't run it on these other pages. We will look at this as an example in the next video when we're actually going to create the template that removes the sidebar. 
but for now I want to show you some of the main conditional tags that you might come across. The way I want you to think of these conditional statements is to think of them as questions and the answer to the question is always going to be either true or it's going to be false. So in the first example we've already seen is page, it's asking is this a WordPress page? If it is then it's true, if it's not then it's false. And we've seen how we can modify this by including parameters inside the brackets. So if we are dealing with an about us page that has the page ID 10, then we can say is page 10 in brackets and that identifies that about us page. But that's exactly the same as using the page title. So if the page title of the about us page was about us, we could include that in the brackets. But that's the same as well as including the page slug, which would be about dash us. So all of those equate to the same thing. That applies to all of these conditional statements. We can use the page ID, the page title or the page slug. The next one is is home and that's checking to see if it's the home page that's loading. The next one is category. This is only the category archive page. So if you've got a category called cats, then we're talking about the category page cats that lists all the posts in that category. It doesn't identify individual posts in a category. To identify posts in a category we use the in category conditional statement and again we can use the category name, ID or slug. So we can say in category cats then do this and that would identify all of the posts in category cats. Similarly with tags we can say is tag that identifies the tag archive page. In other words the page that is created by WordPress to show all posts that have that tag. If you want to identify posts that have a particular tag, then you use the has tag conditional statement. So you can say, if has tag cats, then whatever. And the last one on this list of common conditional statements is is single. And this is what you'd use to identify posts. So is single, and then you have the post ID, post name, or post slug in there. Just before we go on and create a custom template, I want to talk a little bit about Boolean operators. Boolean operators are AND, OR and NOT and we have already seen the NOT, it's the exclamation mark that we used in an earlier example to say if this is not the About Us page then run this code. The top operator there is the OR, it's a double pipe and this will evaluate to true if one or other of the two conditional statements is true. So if you have a post that's in category 4 or it has tag 12 then that becomes true. If it has tag 12 but it's category 5 that will still be true because one or other has to be true and similarly if it's in category 4 but it doesn't have tag 12 that would still evaluate to true because we're in OR operator so it has to be this one or that one has to be true. The AND operator both have to be true. So in this example for this to be true the post would have to be in category 4 and have the tag 12, whatever 12 is. If it was in category 4 and it didn't have tag 12 then that would evaluate to false. And then the tag we've seen already, the NOT operator, the simple example if NOT is page 10, in other words if this is not page 10 do this. A more complex example would be to use the NOT operator together with the other booleans and we could say if in category 4 and not has tag 12 I'll leave you to work out what that means. So with all of this information let's get on and create a custom template. In this video I want to show you how you can create a custom template and we're going to do it in a few different ways. The first way is we're going to try using a conditional tag. So what I've done is I've selected the 2016 theme. It's a theme you've all, everybody's got access to. You can download it from the repository if you want to have a try. And this is what it looks like on the website. We've got this sidebar on the right and I've opened up the About Us page as well because what I want to do is remove the sidebar just from the About Us page. So here's a contact page. I want the sidebar to remain there. I want it to remain on the home page. I just want it disappearing on the About Us page. So let's go in first and we're going to look at all pages and I want to see what the ID is for the about us and I can see down the bottom that the page ID is 16 for this one. So what we need to do is look in at the template files and these are the templates for the 2016 on this website and we need to work out which template we're going to edit because we're going to just put in a conditional tag that says if this is the about us page don't include the sidebar. 
if it isn't the about us page then do include the sidebar so the first thing we need to work out which template we need to edit and you should probably already know this we are going to follow the diagram along here and we come to page php because we haven't got any custom ones yet page php is the template that we need to edit and here i am in the list of templates again we're going to right click and click on edit you can open this in any text editor make sure it is just a text editor it's not word or something that's going to say formatting as well and for the sidebar we're looking for some php code that says get my uh, sorry get sidebar and in this template you can see it down the bottom here php get my uh, get sidebar and then the next line down there would be get footer let me just show you if i was to delete that line and save it and we go back to the about us page we've removed the sidebar but we've removed it from every page on the website ah this is using a different template the home this is the home page so that's using a different template it's not following the one we've just edited so that's not what we want so i'm going to paste that back in and we're going to add in a conditional tag now what we've got here is we've got an opening php section and a closing php section and this here is a call to a function called get sidebar what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that get sidebar on its own line okay and then we need to put in the conditional so the conditional has to go after the less than question mark php if we're going to say is page and the page we could either use single quotes and put about us or we could use the title of the about us or we could use the number without the single quotes and say if is page 16 now we need to make sure this the brackets are correct we've got one bracket that way one bracket that way that's two we've only got one bracket going in the opposite direction so we have to add another one and then we're going to open some curly brackets because what follows is if it is page 16 then we want anything inside these curly brackets to run so if we put the get sidebar in there it, it would be if it is page 16 then put the sidebar in there that's not what we want if it is page 16 we actually don't want anything in there so i'm going to leave that blank and i'm going to put an else so if it's page 16 do what's in here otherwise do what's in the second curly brackets so let's save that i'm going to go back to the about us page and we're going to run it there's no sidebar let's go to the contact page and refresh that and we've got a sidebar on this one let's have a look at some of these other pages because these ones are not page 16 felicity jack and julie are not page 16 so they should have a sidebar and they do so what we've just done then is we've used a conditional statements conditional tag here to decide where the sidebar is we could rewrite this because we could use the not boolean function and say if it is not page 16 then do what's inside these brackets so if it's not 16 get the sidebar let's have a look save it okay so if it's not 16 get the sidebar so contact should have a sidebar about us shouldn't have a sidebar jack should have a sidebar okay so that works as well that's a slightly different way of writing the same thing at this point eagle-eyed students would pull me up and say hey you've done this on the parent theme or the, the main theme you haven't created a child theme and that's quite correct i was using the main theme it's not a parent theme because you can't have a parent theme without a child theme if you're going to make changes you need to make them to the child theme because when 2016 updates in the future it will overwrite my changes that i've just made and we would lose that sidebar formatting so the first thing we would need to do is go in let's childify me and we're going to call this 2016 child let's create it preview and activate activate and publish and then we're going to close this screen down now if i go to my theme screen we'll see that the 2016 child theme is active 
if we now have a look at the folders on my hard drive, go to themes, we can see there is a 2016 child theme. There's no files in there, but what we want to do is make changes to the, P the page PHP. So we would copy this and paste it over into our child theme. And then we would go in and edit that. Now we've already seen how we could use a conditional tag for this. All I'm going to do is show you a much quicker way for creating a template or a, a page template that will only affect the About Us page. And for that, I'm going to simply delete that altogether. So it's deleting the sidebar altogether. And then I'm going to close that down. And if we go back to the website now, what happens? Sidebar has gone from all of the pages. And the reason is, is that we've just edited the child theme and taken the sidebar out of the page template. If I only want to affect the About Us page, then what we can do, if you remember this diagram, WordPress will look for a page template, custom page template, that has the page dash slug or page dash ID. So all I need to do to make this only apply to the About Us page is to put a dash and then I could put about us or I could put 16, which is the page ID. And if we now go back and have a look, let's refresh Jack. Jack's got a sidebar. The about us is now using that new template, so it doesn't have a sidebar. And let's just go on to the contact screen, which should have a sidebar. So that's the second way that we can create a custom template that would simply affect one page on the website. The final thing we could actually do is create a no sidebar template, which is then available to any page that we wanted to. And that's what we'll look at now. And we've already got the template. We've just created it. We've just removed the sidebar from here. We just need to make it available to other pages in the dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the file name and I'm going to change the file name to something more appropriate. Let's call it no sidebar. In fact, I'm going to call it Andy no sidebar. And then I know that it's my file and I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to go in and edit. And the only thing I need to do to make it available to all of the pages on the site is to add some code at the top of this. After the opening PHP bit, let's just put in a new line and I'm going to put in a couple of comments. Now, this is the important bit. Template name Andy no sidebar. And we'll put in a description because the description would also be shown in the dashboard. Description colon and page template without a sidebar. Okay, and I'm going to just finish that little bit of code down there. All right, now let's save that and let's log in to the dashboard and go to all pages. And I want the About Us page. Now, just to have a look, see where we are at the moment, this is the About Us page on the site. If I click the refresh button, we've got a sidebar because we've actually removed that template and we've renamed it. So how do we get rid of the sidebar? Well, we just created that sidebar here, Andy No Sidebar, and we gave it the name Andy No Sidebar. Because we've given it a name and because we have included the name, the template name up here, what you'll find is that now down here under the page attributes, under templates, you'll see Andy No Sidebar. And I can now select that and update the About Us page. And if I now view the About Us page, there's no sidebar. If I go to, let's say, to the contact page, contact page has a sidebar. Let's go in and edit the page and I can select Andy No Sidebar. Update that. And then if we view that page, you can see there's no sidebar. There is one little issue here, and that is that the sidebar was taking up this space on the right and now the content isn't full width. We can fix that, but it means delving into the CSS of the template. Because we're working with a child template, 
we'll go into the child template and we'll change the CSS in there and the template itself. When content is restricted to a certain horizontal part of the screen, in this case it's restricted to what, 65-70% or something, it's usually done in the CSS. And so what we really need to do is have a look in the CSS to make changes. But that page, the About Us page, is being controlled by our Andy No Sidebar template. So let's open that first and we'll see if the CSS is given to us there that we need to change. The main content of the page is in this section here. And we can see that the class, and it usually is the same class, it's content area, that's what you need to look for, content area. That is the class that defines how wide the text goes across. Since we know that, what we can do is we can go into the parent theme. If I show you the child theme first, you'll see that that CSS is empty because we haven't done anything there. But what we want to do is we want to find the CSS in the parent theme that is responsible for that, and then we're going to overwrite it. So let's have a look at that and edit it. And what I'm looking for is content area. Find next. Let me try again. Oh, there's a full stop at the front of that. Oh, and down. There we go. Okay, content area. So this is the bit of code that is controlling the width of the text on that About Us page. Let's go back. I'm going to close this. I've copied that CSS. We're going to go back to the child theme and I'm going to open up the CSS and edit it and we're going to paste it in there. So the content area is now defined in the child theme exactly as it was in the parent theme. So if I save this and go back, nothing has changed. Okay, It's still using the same CSS, but this time it's now using the CSS from the child theme because the child theme will overwrite anything from the parent. So what we need to do then is we need to edit this and you can see that this bit of CSS is saying that the width of the content area is 70%. So if we change that to 100% and save and then go back, we should find that the content now stretches, which it does. However, there is a problem. And that problem is that we've just changed the default content area to 100%. And that content area is found on every page of the website. So now every page has 100% width, even those pages that have sidebars. So we need to make another change. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the class in our template. So up here where it says content area, I'm going to call it content area 100. And then click on save. And then what I need to do is edit the CSS in the CSS file to use the same name. So content area 100. And now this CSS, the only place on this site that this CSS is being used, this class content area 100, is in the Andy No Sidebar template. And what that means is now if we save, make sure everything is saved, we go back to the About Us page, we should have 100% width there. Go to Jack. We've only got 70% width there because that page isn't using the Andy No Sidebar template. Neither is that one. If you go to the contact and have a look there, we can. That one is. Remember, we are using the Andy No Sidebars on the contact page. That one is now correct, 100% width. If we go to the home page, that is using a different theme. Again, that's using 70% width. So that is the third method of creating a custom template that you can use, in this case, across any page on your website. This section a bit about creating custom templates is quite technical. And if you're coming from a completely no programming background, you may be getting a little bit confused. What I suggest you do is go back to the beginning of the section and go through these lectures again, because it will start to make sense and you will start to pick this up and you'll be able to edit these templates and create custom templates for yourself. In the last lecture, we looked at creating a custom template for pages. In this one, just quickly, I want to show you how you can do the same for posts. And if we follow along in the WP Hierarchy image, the template that posts typically use, unless there's a custom template already made for them, is this single 
.php file. So that is the one that we're going to want to edit. So I'm going to go into the parents theme and I'm going to grab the single .php, which is this one. I'm going to take it back to the child theme and paste it in there. Now I'm going to create a template that can be used for lots of different posts. So I'm going to edit the name of this and I'm going to call it Andy Post Template. In fact, let's not call it Andy's Post Template because I'll show you how you can also make this available for pages as well. So the same template being used for both. So let me just save that and then I'm going to edit the file. And then all we're going to do is we're going to edit the top section. So once again, we've, you've seen me do this before. Let's just put template name and I'm going to call it Andy template template post type. Now this is something we haven't seen before. Template post type is the type of post or page, the post type that you want this template to be applied to. And we're going to say at the moment we want it applied to posts. So we just type post. And then let's save that. All right, let's go back into WordPress. And I'm on a post. And at the moment, let me just close these down so we can see what's here. At the moment we've got one, two, three, four, five, six boxes down the right hand side, but there's no way of choosing that new post type or that new post template. Let me refresh the screen because now it will read that template that I've just created. And what you see now is the post attributes box has just appeared. And I can select Andy's template from the post attributes box now. And then that will use my new template. So I can go in, create the template that I want, and then have it available to the posts on my website through the post attribute. If I go over to the pages, click on all pages, let me click on a page in the classic editor. You can see that we've got page attributes, we've got default templates, Andy no sidebar. That's what we did in the past, um, the last lecture. Let me go back into my template and where we put template post type as post, let's put a comma and put a page. So now I'm telling WordPress this template is good for posts and it's good for pages. We've saved it. Let's go back to this page and we haven't refreshed it yet. There's still only Andy's no sidebar. Let's refresh this screen and it will then load in that new template as well. And now we have access to Andy's template as well. So that's how easy it is to create a template that you can make available in the dashboard when editing posts and pages and so on. Now obviously this particular template is exactly the same as the single.php because I've just copied it. I haven't made any alterations to it but that would be the next step is to change it the way that I wanted it to be changed. And all you need to do then is to add this code at the top, template name and the template post type and then it will become available in your dashboard.